Hey, what's up guys? Tony here. And um, I'm doing something different today. I'm doing something different because uh, I want to do a road trip commentary with you guys. And the only way that I know how to do that is to actually go on a road trip. And some of you guys will know from a couple times that I've streamed, I uh, especially this game, I, I do participate, uh, albeit not very often in some Euro Truck Simulator 2. I, I have been <laughs> referring to it as, uh, what the hell have I been calling it? I don't know, Euro Destruction Derby 2 or something like that. <laughs> because I don't really obey the, the rules of the road. I kind of do my own thing and I speed and I'm very dangerous. Because um, uh, I find it a little bit more entertaining that way. Let's see my blinkers. Yeah, my blinkers working. Uh, I actually had um, a career, I guess. I, I'll, I'll, I'll call it a career. Um, I didn't even check. Oh, sorry, guy. Sorry. Oh, oh don't hit me. Uh, I had a career. Oh, shit. Car came out of nowhere, too. Uh, <laughs> This is uh, in no way, shape, or form a reflection of how I drive in real life, but <clears throat> uh, for the for this for this game, I guess it, I find it more entertaining to be a total idiot and drive recklessly, <laughs> as some of you guys might know. Anyways, what I wanted to do is I want to talk about a few things that that have that have gone uh, transpired in the last couple of months. I just I, I really didn't have the time. Uh, to talk about it just because I was busy with school and I just I don't know because I guess because I was busy with school I really wasn't all that motivated to make videos and uh, especially lengthy ones this is gonna be kind of a lengthy video so uh, if you got the time please stick with me and uh, if you don't my apologies maybe you can catch it uh, later on I, thought I just got a speeding ticket I was like fuck uh, later on when you do have time so what I want to talk about uh, is I want to tell you guys a story of what happened to me and then I want to talk about kind of doing the right thing or at least what I believe is sort of a doing the right thing. And so here, here's the story part and this is this actually happened to me and if you follow me on Twitter and um, follow me on I guess Instagram you'll, you'll have seen it. Um, because I posted pictures, oops, I'm going the wrong way, because um, I posted pictures about it when it happened. So, in uh, October 30th, I was working, and um, there was there was this guy, I was, I was actually, it's about 8 o'clock, I was getting ready to leave, and um, I was off at 8, and I was getting ready to leave, and I was walking towards the front of my store, and for those of you guys who don't know, I work at a grocery store, uh, and I have since June, and... Um, so, if you've been following my channel for a while, you'll... Oops, I got a shift. <laughs> uh, you'll know that I used to work at a pizza joint as a delivery driver. Um, so, uh, anyways, I don't work there anymore. <clears throat> I work at the grocery store. Anyway, so it's 8 o'clock, uh, October 30th, so the night before Halloween. And um, there was this guy. Like, I walk towards the front of the store, and there's this guy in a liquor department, which is in the front of our store, which is kind of strange just because of the fact that it's right next to the door. So there's this guy, and he is kind of suspicious looking. Like, I, when I walked up to him, he was sticking a bottle, stuck a bottle of alcohol under his shirt, or in his pants belt, like uh, under his pants, and he flipped his sweater over, and he had another bottle of alcohol in his hands. And, and so I, you know, we're taught at the grocery store, like you give them good customer service, the shoplifters. And I asked him, it's kind of like, do you need a cart? I actually asked him that, would you like a cart? And the guy was like, no. So I'm like, oh, I should probably. Um, and uh, so he says no, and he starts making his way for the door. And I, I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to follow him. So we probably walked about, I don't know, 10 feet or so. And he kind of tells me in sort of a very threatening tone. He says, uh, don't follow me. And in my head, I'm like, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be following you, dude. This is, you know, that's what I'm doing. And uh, so we get, I don't know, about halfway to the door. So from where this all starts taking place, we're looking at probably, I don't know, 30, 30 yards or, you know, say, well, I'll say 100 feet from the door. I don't want to get into, you know, you know, the yardage and start breaking it down. But that's probably about, I don't know, maybe 100 feet from the door or something like that, you know, and inside, firmly inside the store. So we probably get like, I don't know, 20 feet from the door or something like that. 
and uh, I had this I had something in my hands I flung it and tossed it on this display that we had and um, uh, at that point we got about oh coming over sorry guy <laughs> cut him off um, we got about five feet from the door and my memory of of, of the events are so different because later on I got a chance to view the security footage but my, my memory of what happened uh, compared to what actually happened are kind of different it, it kind of it shook me a little bit so what I remember doing is I remember stopping him by grabbing him on his arm uh, by my left hand grabbed his right arm like his elbow I told him that he has to pay for that and he you know was, he got very defensive and he started fighting he was like get off me and so he told me that he had a knife and that he was going to, quote, cut me. And I was like, okay. Well, as soon as I heard that, all my thought went from the merchandise he was stealing to self-preservation. And so we got into a fight because I was behind him and I had a hold of him. And there was no way in hell that, uh, oh, there we go. There's your Euro Derby for Euro Truck Derby right there. Uh, there's no way in hell that I was going to let him go if he had a knife and he was going to threaten me with physical violence. Uh, so there was a struggle ensued. Somehow we got outside. I don't really remember. Based upon my own memory, I don't really remember. Uh, oops, fucking this thing up. I don't remember how we got outside. But there, uh, we, we got outside. There was, a, there was another struggle outside. I tripped him and bam, he falls on his stomach. Um, basically, I kind of tackled him, falls onto his stomach, he breaks the bottle that was against his stomach. And then uh, I was, I had my arm around his chest, and so I was bringing my arm away from him to, to push myself up to be on top of him. And the guy bit me on the forearm, like bit me argh, with his teeth. And I was so stunned. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, you bit me. What? I mean, like, what the hell? And uh, the guy was like, oh, get off me, man. Get off me. I'm cut. I'm cut. I'm bleeding. Get off me. And of course, I'm like, no fucking way, I'm getting off you. Uh, so I had my knee on his back and everything, and we were waiting for um, the sheriffs to show up. And a customer came and uh, and helped me out to keep him on the ground. Uh, and then for whatever reason, I have no idea why, because it felt like an eternity. My adrenaline was rushing, and it's just like every minute felt like like a year it was incredible I, I've never like uh, I've never had that experience before where everything sh like time stood still because I swear that I was on top of this guy for I don't know like three or four minutes and so he's like oh get off me get off me you know, I'm bleeding I'm cut I'm bleeding and with somebody else there, I figured, okay, I think it'd be safe to let him up. We can, um, uh oh, we can, uh, safely let him up. And, um, I don't know how to get out of fifth gear. There we go. Whoa, apparently we're in fifth gear now. Um, so we, I let him up, but I, I had my hand around the back of his neck and his shoulder, and I was going to sit him down. We've got columns in front of my store. I was going to sit him down and um, wait for the sheriffs to show up. And it was at that moment where I'm trying to sit him down that he wrestled himself free and took off into the night. And so I had to go through the whole ordeal of filing a police report. Um, I went to the ER because the guy bit me. And, um, you know, it was, it was, a, it was a sucky ass experience. And it was funny because, um, well, I'll tell you about the, the, you went to the ER and, you know, the guy, the, pretty much like I went there and the doctor looked at me and goes, oh, okay, cool. No stitches, no nothing. Just cleaned it. Gave me some antibiotics, you know, told me to make sure that I, um, keep it clean. Oh, 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 uh, all right. Hey, we're good. We're good. Oh, what happened? I stalled. Um, just pretty much told me to make sure to keep it clean. And, uh, if there's any sort of signs of serious infection to, uh, make sure to come back immediately. It's like they, they stress that immediately come back. Don't hesitate. <clears throat> so I was like, okay, fine. And I kept an eye on it and nothing, it didn't get infected, but I've got a pretty gnarly scar there now. And uh, the next day I will, after, after it initially happened, I talked to the sheriffs, you know, my, my bosses were just kind of like, Oh my God, they had that, that dead man walking look in their eyes. 
And I didn't know it at the time. I should have because, you know, we went through quote training, watched a freaking video about it, you know, what to do in case of shoplifter. And that was like my first day working at the store. Uh, I've totally have forgotten about it. It was a matter of instinct that took over. That, that's really all I can say is that it was me just instinctually doing something. And uh, so the next day, basically, so my my, co- my my bosses were like, "Yeah, you're you're gonna you're gonna get fired. You know that that is, what you did is is unacceptable, and you will you will be terminated for that. I guarantee you. That's what they all told me. So I walked in the next day, October 31st, Halloween. Um, it was kind of funny too because like, uh, well, two things. I'll I'll tell you the drama before I get to the the, the laughter, the funny part, but. Uh, so I came in the next day, first straight away, because I'd be there at 10 o'clock in the morning. Got in there at 10 o'clock in the morning, walked right into my boss's office, and he's. I said, I knocked on his door. I said, hey, I um, imagine you want to see me. And he said, yes, close the door. So I've never been in his office with the door closed. So I was like, that's not good. Um, anyway, so I told him what happened, and he pretty much told me, he's like, hey, look, it's out of my hands. There was a police report. Um, you may get fired. You may not. It's above me right now. Um, you're not supposed to touch shoplifters. You're supposed to just let them go. And I was like, okay, shit. I totally forgot about that, that part of it. And so uh, pretty much the whole day went by, and uh, me not knowing whether or not I was going to fire or not, and it was about 5 o'clock, I kind of had this weird suspicion that, like, they were going to have me work the whole day and then fire my ass at the end of the day. And I didn't find out till later on that they can't do that. They have to immediately fire you right now. They can't make you work the whole day and then fire your ass at the end of the day. But I didn't know that then. That's just kind of what I thought was going to happen. So <clears throat> anyways, at 5 o'clock rolls around, he calls me into his office. And he goes, yeah, all right, here we go. We've got ourselves a Halloween miracle. Um, you know, he got the whole thing dropped. Don't know how. It's just he got it dropped. He goes, all right. And he gave me what's called a first and final warning and basically what that means is if I break any of the rules pertaining to shoplifters again if I go out if I follow a shoplifter outside immediate termination because I am disobeying the rules that I said that I would obey uh, as terms of my employment so I was like okay dodged a bullet and everyone else was just like I can't believe you didn't get fired and I'm like I can't believe I didn't get fired here I walked into to the to the store I walked in to get fired I knew that I was going to get fired and I went into face music so that's what happened uh, if you want to see pictures you can go to Instagram I'll, I'll put the I'll put the link in the description you guys can take a look at that but what I want to talk about is this this uh, I, I went through a period of uncertainty about this whole situation because of the fact that I felt like I did the right thing but my boss really made it a point to make me feel as if I did the wrong thing because from a from a corporate standpoint from a work standpoint I did everything wrong I touched I touched the shoplifter which I shouldn't have done now I should have prefaced this before if if he would have touched me in any way then I can fight back I can touch him but because I touched him first um, that means that my company is liable um, for anything you know because I quote assaulted this guy who, you know, there's a, a bunch of arguments. Oh, I could have been going outside to get a cart, blah, blah, blah. He wasn't. He was drunk, smelled of alcohol. He was clearly shoplifting. Uh, and my boss said, you know what? Hey, there's no doubt in my mind he was shoplifting, but I'm just telling you the things that could be said. And so this is why we have these policies in place. And you just did everything wrong. And I, and I started to go back and forth in my own head I'm like well oh god I did do the wrong thing I did absolutely everything wrong I can't believe it but then I'd be I'd get down on myself I'm like why did I do that that's so stupid and then I'm like no wait fuck that no this guy was shoplifting he he's the one who was doing wrong I'm doing the right thing I did the right thing by trying to stop him like that's how I feel stealing is wrong and nobody should get away with it and the problem that I have is that my company and a lot of companies out there, like when I worked at Best Buy, there's the same thing. You could, if you followed a shoplifter outside the door, immediate termination, like on the spot. The second you walked out that door, your job, you were done at Best Buy. It's the same sort of way at the company that I'm working at now. Uh, and it, it promotes this environment of stealing. There's no repercussions, you know, like literally, 
you can't even get in someone's way. If they're walking out the door, you can just yell at them, try to get them to stop or drop whatever they're trying to steal, but you can't do anything to stop them physically from leaving the store. So they can walk in, you can walk in, grab like a $130 bottle of Don P, walk right out the door, and there's absolutely nothing any employee can do to stop you. And that's wrong. That's I feel it's wrong. So I went through that this mental battle with myself, just like, did I do the right thing? Did I, did I really do the wrong thing or did I do the right thing? Because I had one one of the sheriff's deputy that came to do the initial interview. She was like, oh, no, you did the right thing. You know, next time, just don't get up off of them. These scumbags, you know, they're scumbags, dirtbags. Stay on top of them. You know, we'll come collect them. Um, and uh, that's what you just have to do. Just don't ever get off of them because they'll get away like they did. So I was like, okay, lesson learned. But then this detective came with, you know, he lined up photos and he, he came a couple of times and, and he told me, you know, cause we couldn't identify him. I only saw him from the back. I never saw him from the front. And uh, he told me, he goes, look, um, you know, that was, it's not worth it. It's not worth the $40 thereabouts of alcohol that he was trying to steal. It's not worth your life. It's not worth getting shot. It's not worth getting stabbed just let them go so even within the law enforcement community i have this this conflict of of i guess morality it's like one person saying i did the right thing and nobody should be stealing and this is we're talking about a sheriff's deputy someone who sees it every day day in and day out and then of course on the other hand you can see a detective who probably sees murders and all sorts of other cases and he's telling me it's not worth your life and i'm just like what the fuck even even in the law enforcement community i have these split ideas but like what is right and what is wrong and and it really bothers me even to this day to a little bit i mean i still think i did right i don't think that stealing is right i think stealing is wrong and i think people should not get away with it that's just how i feel i mean case in point it was like a couple of days later i was working um the front end i was managing that night a couple of kids come in and they just look like trouble. They did. And so uh, they came into the pair and one of the guys I was working with was like, okay, if they walk this way, they're probably stealing something. This guy had 16 years of experience. So, he, you know, he could pick them out. <laughs> and so sure enough, one kid came walking back opposite door from where we were standing and walked to the other side. And he just had this attitude about him, like this don't fuck with me attitude in my gut. This is only a couple days after I had just almost gotten fired for trying to stop a shoplifter. I felt myself take one step towards the shoplifter and I stopped myself. I had to physically go, like, oh, whoa, Tony, wait, what are you doing? Like this is, you not, no, you just let him go. And that's, that's the rule that I'm now living by. Uh, oh my God, I got another speeding ticket. Just let him go, you know? I, I, because you know what there's two things I've noticed is that yes it's not worth my job yes it's not worth my life but I'm fighting like if it was like if it was acceptable to approach to detain a shoplifter I would do it in a heartbeat I feel that's what's right but because I'm can get fired it's not worth it so I just gonna ah, fuck it whatever you want to steal something go ahead and fucking steal something I don't care you know it's not my merchandise it's not my money um, just go whatever <laughs> and so uh, I was telling our loss prevention guys dude named Sean I was just like alright here's the thing this is what I'm gonna do now I see someone shoplifting from now on I'm like excuse me sir madam would you like help out with that because I can't stop you from stealing, but how about I help you out with that? And he, it was just a joke, but he's just like, no, that's that's like totally the opposite <laughs> way and not something you're supposed to do. You know, you're supposed to go through. I was like, dude, Sean, I'm just fucking kidding, man. Don't worry about it. But I'm at this point now where I, I just, you know, I think I've seen a couple of people steal. I'm just kind of like, fuck it, whatever. Peace out. Have fun with that. And whoa, whoa, about to blow my motor here. But uh, with that, we have arrived at our destination. And um, I hope you have been entertained with my story. This is a, this is a story that um, I honestly have been wanting to tell for a while now. But 
I, I just haven't had the time. And like I said, I just, to be honest, a part of me just didn't really have the energy. And so I thought, what better way, like I said in the beginning, what better way to get a long story out than do it through a road trip? Because I've told this story a number of times to people, and, uh, and it usually is kind of lengthy and to, to kind of cram it into, you know, like a 10 minute commentary or whatever, uh, it can be a little tough. So, anyways, for some of you guys who, uh, we're interested because I know I had a, several people ask me, like, what happened? What happened? How come you got bit? What What's going on? Well, now you know. And um, so now you know the story. And um, maybe I'll do a couple more of these. I, I actually do really like Euro Truck Simulator 2, even though it is, I, ever, I play it as a derby game. But um, I, I've got more of these sort of long stories, like in whimsical stories, I could I could paint for you guys and tell you guys. So, uh, anyways, before I ramble way on way too long, uh, I want to say thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I shall talk to you guys later.